And how's it going, guys? Joshua Lafemi here, live from LA, and welcome to Creative Week with Nick Koo here on the Joshua Lafemi channel. Creative Week is a time when we step in every day for an entire week with one of my good friends that's usually way more talented than myself and where we get to discuss and dive into some incredibly awesome topics. So who is my bro Nick Koo and what can you expect out of this week? I've known Nick's work for close to 10 years. He's one of the most talented VFX artists that I know, and he currently lives in Sydney, Australia. He's worked with so many big brands and artists, and this week he is committed to one VFX tutorial every single day, which is crazy. Today, Nick's going to be showing you three ways to make titles look really cool. But first, of course, we're going to talk about Envato Elements. If you're watching this video, you're probably a video editor, and Envato Elements is a video editor's dream. It's a subscription service that gives you unlimited downloads of the most incredible stock footage, like cloud and fog overlays, aerial footage, fire, lightning. They also have incredible VFX packs, Premiere and After Effects templates, sound effects, royalty-free music, and literally anything you could ever want as a video editor. Just by clicking the link below, you will automatically get a free first month. You'll see that coupon for the free first month at the very, very end after you've finished signing up. And that's it. I use Elements literally in some regard every day. So I've got two tickets, one for me and one for you. And we're going to take a flight way down to Sydney, Australia. Nick, the floor is yours. Thanks, Josh. We've got a lot to cover today. We've got titles three ways. So let's get going. First, we're going to create a new comp. Let's make it 1920 by 1080 at 24 frames a second. And we'll make it three seconds. Let's use the text tool to create a new title. Uh, let's call it Ula Femi. We'll change the color to white. And then we're going to center the text by pressing Option Alt Home, then pressing Alt Home. And now let's use the pen tool and create a stroke that's a little bit longer than the length of the word. And then we're going to dial up the stroke so it covers the full size of the word. Now we're going to twirl down to the contents and then down to the shape and then down to the transform. And then we're going to find the skew property and make it 30. Now we'll go to the one second mark and we're going to add a trim path function. And we're going to twirl down and we're going to go to the end and set a keyframe and then go back to the front and then set the keyframe to zero. Now that looks a little bit long. So I shrank back the keyframe and the animation looks a bit gross. So we're going to set the keyframe velocity to 75 on both the influence at the beginning and at the end. That looks much better. Now we're going to pull that below the text layer and we're going to duplicate it and offset the layer by a couple of frames and change the color of it to something tasteful. Maybe this nice orange. Now we're going to duplicate it again and we're going to offset it another few keyframes and switch it to another color. I like this sort of tealy blue. Now we're going to do a reveal on the word. So we're going to duplicate the last layer and bring it to the top and set it to set the text layer to an alpha mat and offset it just after the last object. And we're going to put a positioning keyframe on it so it looks like it slides in as it gets revealed on. We're also going to grab these two keyframes and then go to keyframe velocity and set the beginning and end at 75. So that didn't look very good. So I alt clicked on the first keyframe to undo the keyframe velocity influence. That looks a lot better. Great, that's the first title done. First thing, we're going to draw a circle by holding down shift and dragging out a circle using the circle shape tool. Then we're going to center the circle by pressing option command home and then pressing alt home to bring it to the center. We're going to resize the circle to just a bit bigger than the word. And we're going to set a keyframe here at about the one second mark. Then we're going to go back to the beginning of the comp and set a keyframe for zero. As you can see here, the animation looks pretty gross. So we're going to use our keyframe velocity trick and set both the influence for the beginning and the end for 75. That looks much better. Now we're going to bring the shape layer below the text layer, and we're also going to set the track mat of the shape layer to the text layer above it. Then we're going to grab the text and the shape layer and duplicate it, and then offset it by a few keyframes. We're going to change the color of the shape layer to something else, like this nice magenta color. And we're going to move the shape layer just a little bit off from where it was before, just so it's a little bit of a little bit different. Then we're just going to duplicate the shape layer and text layer again. And we're going to move the shape layer one more time. And we're going to change the color to something else again. Maybe this nice, uh, this nice orange. 
And now we're going to duplicate it one more time and this will be our final layer and our final reveal. And we're going to change the shape layer to white in the stroke. And we're also going to fill this one in as well. And that way when it does finally finish, it finishes on a solid. We're also going to create a new null. And we're going to grab everything and parent it to the null. Then we're going to go to around the 1 second 15 mark and say keyframe. And then go back to the beginning and set it to 90. There we go. We have a slow scale up. And we'll just put an easy ease on it just to make it a bit nicer. And there we go. Two out of three titles down. First thing, we grab the pen tool and we draw a stroke, just like we did in the first one, just a little bit longer, but we're gonna actually make this stroke a little bit thinner this time, maybe around 32. Now we're gonna go to the 16 frame mark and set a trim path function on the shape. And we're gonna set a keyframe at the 16 frame mark and then go to the beginning and set a keyframe to zero. We're gonna highlight both those keyframes and highlight the keyframe velocity and set the beginning to 75 and the end to 75 and press okay. That looks pretty good. Now, what I do here is duplicate the first stroke and shift it up so that it's roughly a full stroke width above the previous stroke. It doesn't need to be exact, but it's important to ensure there are no gaps between the two strokes. I offset the animation of the first stroke by a few frames and then duplicate it again, move the newly duplicated stroke up and offset it again. I repeat this process a few times till I have enough strokes to cover the whole word. The key to this method looking good is variation, so feel free to vary the width of each layer as you go along and offset the timing of the animation. Once you're happy with the animation, select all the layers except the text layer, and then go to Layer, Precompose. We'll call it Mat. Now we set the track mat of the text layer to the alpha mat, and that will inherit the shape of the mat layer. Let's change the color of the text to a warm blue. Let's duplicate the mat layer and text layer and move it up. Offset it and change the color of the text layer to a slightly darker blue. I do this a few more times in a lighter blue, and then finally white. Then I steal one of the strokes from the matte composition and pull it into the main comp. Here I need to animate the stroke off, so I go back into the trim path effect and find the start property. Here I set a keyframe for 0% at the beginning, and then set a keyframe for 100% in the same position for the end property. Again, I select the keyframes, and then I select the keyframe velocity and set the incoming and outgoing velocity to 75. I then offset the created keyframes, and voila, we have a lovely stroke animating on and off. Let's duplicate this stroke and drop it behind everything varying the position and width and offsetting the animation slightly. And there you go. You completed title number three. Shout out to Nick for such an incredible tutorial. Please make sure to check out all the videos in this week's creative series down in the description below. Thanks so much for watching the video, guys. I actually have two additional videos that you've got to watch. And remember to get your free month of Envato Elements by clicking the link below in the description. And lastly, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Thanks so much for watching, guys. And as always, remember to keep it chill.